What's up guys, Nightingale here, and welcome to another Intermediate Traveler's Guide video. Today, we're going to be talking about Normal Raid. Before we get started, I do want to say this. If you have not completed Nick Seed 5, you probably shouldn't be worrying about Normal Raid yet. Why? For two reasons. One, it costs one key per entry to enter any of the Normal Labyrinths. Significance is, one key per entry is huge because that means Every day, you should be able to enter at least once. If you have multiple keys, you can enter multiple times. Two, the other reason is this set is very, very good depending on who you need this for. It's a great destruction set with both crit rate and a destruction set. It, it rolled really well for me. I have 349 crit damage, a good amount of attack. I can use this on so many different characters. But do I need it for the characters that I'm trying to get through? No, but for you as a newer player, this set is huge. I cannot stress it enough. Make sure you work on getting this set first. Now, the other reason is normal raid cost two keys a day or two keys per entry to enter normal raid as we jump in here. Now, hell raid can only be entered by having malicious bug charms, which this is basically the whole point of normal raid. Is to get this charm it's guaranteed don't worry it takes three fights to get it and we'll talk about that in a minute what else are we here for ancient coins that's basically what we're going to be using normal raid for throughout our progression is farming up ancient coins and the bug charm you can do this once a week as you can see we have six days and 11 hours it is a total of a seven day timer today is monday and it will reset every monday now for hell raid it is once a month. Every 30 days, it resets. So you have plenty of time to farm up five keys if you want to go full clear the whole thing. But the good news is, for Hell Raid specifically, you don't always have to beat every boss fight. Is it advised? Yes, because it is a monthly reset. But if you're just starting out and you've only got seven days left, just get in and get as many of them done as you possibly can. Now, we're here to talk about Normal Raid. As far as the gear goes that you see here, it's not very good. It is good because it's some stuff that you're probably not farming, but chances are, if you're doing Wyvern and you're doing it fairly successful, the gear quality you're getting out of there is probably better than this stuff right here. If it rolls really good substats and you're missing a good piece, sure, feel free to roll it. But honestly, it's 67 gear, you probably can replace this. The other thing I want to point out before we get jumping into this is the rewards here. I did say that it resets once a week, but this is non-resettable. Once you've beat this and you've got the reward from it, these are one-off unique items, and that's it. You will not be looting multiple of these, of these a week, month, whatever. Once you've looted it, they're looted. Now, for the team that I'm using... I will say this now, it's not the most morale efficient, and we're going to talk about that in a second. But this is a team that I've been using that can clear all of the normal raids. Believe it or not, this is my lazy way out of doing normal raid. Now, I know you guys probably don't have Lilius, you probably don't have Tamron, you probably don't have Vivian, but those of you smart enough to listen to me and picked Arbiter Vildred, you at least have him. Now, what could you do? literally anything that does damage take the concept and make it work so let's explain to you what my team is and then we're going to talk about the morale of it now sure we can get into actually going to morale calculating and trying to get the most efficient possible but chances are you're going to end up wanting to use just what's geared and what can you what you can you have that works for the fight specifically lilius is here to be my arius holder we have tamarin here for the buff the combat ready push and the heals that's tamron's job vivian is basically immunity an aoe nuke and a single target nuke rb is here for rb damage you know he's a control unit he pushes things back he blinds you i mean what what more would why would you not want rb i mean rb everything right i can also hear the the, the haunting talking behind me just i hear it the voice is saying landy but moving on this is what I'm using. Now, I'm going to bring up a screen, and I know some of you have talked, told me on stream that this isn't as accurate. Here's the thing. For every unit I've checked, and actually checked in-game, this is accurate. 
I'm using Epic 7X as my um, Labyrinth calculator. So I'm going to get this a little bit bigger right here. We're going to close the CAPTCHA out so that you can see what you have here. So friendship calculator. What you're actually calculating is your morale. And here's how we do it. We're going to search for Arbiter Vildred. We're going to add to roster. We're going to search for Lilius. Add to roster. We're going to search for Tamarin. We're going to add to roster. We're going to search for uh, Vivian. And we're going to add to roster. Now, we've added it to our roster. And we can see down here that this team is a 27 morale team. The way you're going to get that morale is through using the myth conversation and the cute cheer conversation, which we'll go over quickly again once we get to the point of needing to actually camp. This is also how you can determine what units to bring in as well. So we're going to say, for instance, I have Spectre Tenebria. We have, um, I'm going to pull a couple out of my hat. Let's see here. We have, uh, who I have six star. We have Alencia. We have um, Cigarette, because everybody has Cigarette. We all re-rolled for Cigarette. And we have, um, let's pick out a four-star, because I can. We're going to say uh, Sinful Angelica, who I do not have. So we're going to assume that these are the units that we're wanting to bring in. These are our geared units. Now, here's the cool thing. It now shows us the team that has the most morale out of this and it tells you which conversation you need so if you're curious you can add in every unit you have that has is leveled and has gear and then you can see what works now pay attention there are type advantages type disadvantages there are things that need to be aoe'd things that don't need to be aoe'd things that need straight damaging attacks there are mechanics around in it but Normal raid, once you get to a certain point, you can kind of blow by most of those cheap mechanics and just straight damage it and walk away. Because Tamron basically solves everything. Arby basically solves everything. Dual attacks from Lilius basically solves everything. Not saying this is the perfect team, but you can definitely get a lot of morale. I've, I've even seen somewhere upwards into the mid 40s for morale when, with some of the units that I have, but I'm not going to go through and add my entire roster in here just for that point. But do note, it can go higher than 38, and it can get a lot worse. Obvious, actually, no, I can't act. Did I get worse? Yes, I could get worse than my current team. So I'm not the worst, I'm not the best. Now, let's jump in and we're going to talk about more things. On to the next subject. Welcome into Normal Raid. Now, the first thing we're going to cover is the shop, just because I want to go ahead and get this over with so that you can understand what you're after here and what you want to buy. Each week, the shop resets and you can be able to buy an item or two out of it. Now, as with everything, there are things you want to buy and things you don't want to buy. So you can see they offer weekly, you can, or yeah, weekly you can get catalysts, both rare and epic. You have 67 items, you have red charms, and a RNG box. Now before I even state it, does anybody know what you're actually going to be wanting to buy here? It's okay, you can, you can, you, I'll give you a second to think about this. What looks the most tempting here? For those of you who said the catalysts, no. For those of you who said the gift, no. The gift is a chance at 200,000 gold, 100, 100 sky stones, 10 covenants, a galaxy bookmark, gold transmit stone, Mulagora seed. You're all probably sitting there going, yeah, that looks really worth. Enjoy your 200 gold, 200,000 gold. It's what is going to mostly roll. Sure, you could take the shot at it. What I come in here and buy is, the to me, the most important thing right now for developing accounts is artifact charms. Artifact charms, artifact charms, artifact charms. If you're really short, sure, you can come in here and buy the other charms, but personally, I find a lot of value in, I'm trying to level up a lot of artifacts, getting them plus 15, getting them plus 30. These charms are huge and they're helpful. So right now, I'm doing that. Plus 67 gear, we're past the point of this being useful for us, so there's no point in buying it. Even though, yes, it does look like it's rolled really, really well. Don't be tempted. It's 67 gear. Catalyst, you can go farm them elsewhere. Why waste your weekly points on that when you have a wonderful red artifact charm just sitting here waiting to be bought? So that covers the shop. Let's move on to the fights. Now we're going to talk about all the fights and where should you go. As most of us, we're after the low-hanging fruit. 
because we're lazy, we want to get it over with, and we want to be able to get up here as soon as possible, beat the main boss so we get our key and we can leave. That means you basically go east and west and we avoid going into the souths. So if you want the two easiest fights you can do a week, you want to come over here and work on the Devourer, and then you want to work towards the Executioner. Now, the others are easy, but if you're after the low-hanging fruit, those are the lowest of them. My first pick, doesn't matter which way you go, I, for some reason, always go west first. I don't know, I always think about the pioneering going west. I'm from the U.S., that's, that's where my brain goes. Some of you pioneer to the east. But for me, it's pioneering to the west. So off we go. What we're going to do is to save time for this video. I am going to skip all of the BS fights up to the boss, and then we'll cover the Dark boss quickly. Raid. We'll also there, we'll start the boss, we'll talk about some of its mechanics, and then we'll jump over to beating the boss, and then talk about what we're going to do after that. Okay, we've made our way up to the first boss. I will go ahead and show you the path that I took. Um, this is probably the most efficient path you can take. Straight over, straight up. Super, super easy. We gained 120 coins along the way. We got six random poorly piece of crap gear, probably, and 2,000 gold. Nothing super major. Now, we are negative four morale. Just like in your normal labyrinths, it's the same here. We have no bad effect. Now, in theory, I could just go take this fight. Because I'm not going to gain anything else from it. 5% health? Sure, why not? But I want to go ahead and show you here how to use the calculator. So we're going to bring that back up. Which is right here. So there's the calculator. And right here it's telling us to use Vivian's Myth and Tamarin's... Um, Cute cheer. So we come over to the conversation with Vivian. We choose myth. Do you know any myth? Now Vivian talks about myths Chandra and all that good stuff. They worshipped the stars. Wonderful animations. We could stay there all day. And then cute cheer from Call me when you're feeling down and lonely. Tamar. I'll be the shining star in And there we home. gain our maximum morale for this team. And we're going to go ahead and take that off as well. And there we go. All right. Now for your team, use the calculator, find what's best for you, pick the two options, and there you go. Now we're going to take the fight. Chaos. This fight's pretty easy. The big thing you're going to want to note is... At my point, I'm able to auto this, and I don't even need to think about mechanics. But we will go over them really quick. We'll let Tamron do Tamron's thing real quick, and then I'll, I'll tell you what's going on. So obviously we've got a permanent buff that cannot be stripped for damage reduction and immunity to debuffs. These are permanent, mechanic-wise. You also see Crisis Response, which grants extra turn. If the caster's health is 50% or less when attacked, grants the extra turn and decreases skill cooldown by 3. The effect can only be triggered once per battle. So basically he's going to... Once you get him below 50% health, so below this, he's going to trigger an extra turn. He's going to reduce all of his skill cooldowns, and he's going to probably spray you again. It's not that big of a deal. Especially once you get gear quality, you get going. This fight you auto and it's over and done with within... A minute or two. Incubate Venom. Grants stackable increased attack and speed at the end of the turn. When the Corrupted Web is available, grants stackable increased attack and critical hit at the start of the turn. Corrupted Web is right here. Stance Change. When Corrupted Web is available, key word, when it's available, it grants immunity and damage reduction. When Corrupted Web is not available, it makes all enemies unable to be buffed. Enemies inflicted with the unbuffable, or with unable to be buffed, are affected by changes to, or unaffected by changes to combat readiness. Keyword. So, we are going to get the unbuffable when that's off, and he's going to keep the damage reduction and the immunity while it's activated, as you see right now. 
But again, we don't have to worry about it. The next big thing is dash. Dashes towards the enemy with a 75% chance to stun for one turn. Hopefully it's not your big damage dealer about to go off. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to let Tamarin... We'll go ahead and put Tamarin into her remote, into her idle form, do her combat ready push. And I'm going to put it on auto. We're going to chisel it down till about the f right around in here range. We'll cut back. We'll let you see the stance change. Then we'll cut when I'm about to kill it. And then we'll go on to the next phase. Okay, we're about to go into the second phase. Arby should be able to go through. There we go. Second phase. Corrupted web instantly goes. And we're back at it. It's really that simple. It's nothing really that major. But it just shows you that he will go instantly use his same skill again, even though he used it just right beforehand. It's not a big deal. And we'll go all the way and cut back when uh, they finish killing him. All right, we're about 45 seconds from the last cut. We're about to go in and finish off the boss. Super easy. I think Arby's going to clean up for us. Nope, Vivian cleaned up for us. Great. So, we've officially beat our first boss. Well, we still have morale left. What do you want to do? You want to start working towards the progress of your next fight. So for me, what I do is, it sounds weird, I know, but I come in here and I just go till I die. Yeah, it happens. Even with the units as set up as they are, they will die. So to make it easy, you come down here, you teleport. We're gonna click east, and now we're gonna travel east until they die. We will refresh. And actually at that point, I would probably back out because my morale's officially drained. Then the next time I get two keys, which for me will probably be tomorrow because I still have the guild key I have not purchased for the week. So tomorrow I'll be able to do another boss and I will do the same process again. So I'll see y'all tomorrow for you in just a second. And time skip. Hi, it's tomorrow. For you, it was like three seconds ago. All right, so our next fight. We're heading up here towards the Executioner, and we're ready for disappointment. So let's head on up. I'm gonna cut again. Just wanted to say we're back. We're on to the next fight. Nothing's changed. We're gonna jump up there, finish up all that stuff, and I'll see you at the boss fight. Now we're up towards the Executioner, so let's jump into this. We're not even gonna bother with morale. We've got plenty of morale right here because we took the fight earlier, which allowed us to progress up here a lot easier with less fights. So, let's jump into it. What do we need to know here? Well, going left to right. Death Sentence. Mm, sounds ominous. Increases attack and speed of the caster permanently. Grants an extra turn when the caster's health is 40% or less. Yay. Activates Crush after, after using Slice when Crush is available for use. I assume that's that probably that turn up there. As an extra turn can only be granted once per battle. All right, cool. How much you want to bet? Yep, this is Crush. All right, we'll get to that in a second. Shadow. This is why you want to bring AOE. I remember this. So when the caster health is 70% or less, they are granted an extra turn, stealth for two turns at the end of the turn when the caster is stealth at, or, ah, let's read that again because that doesn't make sense to my head. When the caster's health is 70% or less, they are granted an extra turn and stealth for two turns at the end of the turn. Oh yeah, that's I get what they're saying. When the caster is stealth at the start of the turn, it recovers health and grants a permanent stackable increased attack and speed buff. Stealth can only be granted once every two turns, so you can't just they can't just perma cheese it into perma stealth. Great. Uh, the skill does not activate when the caster's health is 40% or less. The extra turn will only be granted once during the battle. Cool. Easy enough. Inner peace. All right. Uh, grant stackable increased attack and speed when attacking greatly increases evasion when attacked by a debuffed enemy So when you get debuffed uh, after successfully evading dispels all debuffs figures and From the caster before counterattacking a counterattack will always result in a critical hit. It will hurt is basically what it's saying Slice cuts the enemy uh, decreasing their defense for two turns so something you will want to have immunity for um, to prevent that. And then Crush uh, rushes towards the enemy and attacks, stunning them for two turns. If the casters, or if the target's health is 50% or less when the when attacking, they will lose 99% of their health after the attack. That's nasty. Why don't I remember that? Uh, when silenced, this skill will not uh, be activated 
will only increase the cooldown count. The skill will only be activated when the caster's health is 40% or less. So it's annoying, but here's the thing. With this fight, it's really, really easy. We've also got Gab, so you know what? We're gonna sit here, we're gonna do Arby things, and just dig in. And now, we're gonna put it on auto. It's a pretty easy fight. Um, I did bring grass to this fight, but I'm not worried. Um, with the level of gear quality I have, Vivian is the least of my worries here. Um, between the AoE, which helps the um, stealth phase whenever it rotates around and she's got it, it's it's a lot. It's really beneficial. Um, Vivian, uh, then you've got uh, Lilius also has a AoE, so I mean you're able to hit the target while it's in. That's main the main reason why I brought Arby here, is we're getting immunity and the attack buff. Uh, Tamron's gonna do Tamron things. Again, it's my scuff Tamron, so nothing important. As you can see, he stealthed here, and we're waiting. Ah, perfect time. We even are able to AoE it just right out the gate. As you can see, we're not even just a minute into this fight, and we've already taken it down half health. And that's with the grass unit. Now, if this was hell mode, I wouldn't be bringing grass. Let's be real. But with this and my gear quality, and once you get there, it's really not that bad. You can easily cheese through this fight. I mean, we're literally almost done with it. I might as well not even cut at this point. I want to just talk to you about it, show you the fight, but at this point, we're... I can wait another 20 seconds. They are absolutely destroying this boss. So we're really cheesing through the mechanics. You're not even actually getting to see mechanics with this gear quality, and that's actually the point of normal raid at this point. This shouldn't be a struggle for advancing accounts. So... Beginners, yes, the first time through might be a little rough, but as you start developing good units, this thing's literally cheese. We brought a grass unit and lost half, no, not even half health with Tam. There we go. There's that boss. Now, what's next? You have two options. As you can see, the gate is now open. We can now go north towards the queen, or we can go work towards the other two side bosses. The choice is yours. This comes down to a time management thing. If you are staying on top of your boss, you can go towards one of these. You've got less fights that you need to take to work your way down here. You might actually be able to get this fight today if you have the right morale. But if you're working your way up north towards Queen because you don't want to risk, the key word is risk, maybe forgetting to get your Hell Raid key weekly, it's probably better for you to take this fight or work your way up there today. But the next time you come in here, this should be a pretty easy, easy run. Probably most of the morale go here. And honestly, I would probably, depending on which one I'm on, I'll probably just take the morale hit and just finish it up next run. Because normal raid, we can do multiple bosses a day. For today, my goal is I'm going to move up forward. We're going to go to Queen. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut the video here. We're going to time skip again. Two days real life. Yay. And I will see you at Queen in two days. Or for you. So two days have passed. We've got some keys. Now we're up here at Queen. I decided to save you the effort. And I went ahead and just moved all the way up here and got into the fight. Now, we're going to go over our skills and talk about some things. You can already see that there's some pretty nasty debuffs. I'm going to go over this stuff with you. But basically, here's the TLDR of all the long crap we're about to read. AoEs, focus her, and the fight's over with. You will you might kill one set of the adds, but I'll be honest, depending on where your gear quality is, you probably shouldn't be here trying to just kill the adds. If you have to kill off all of the adds, this raid may be just a little difficult for you. Maybe you might want to go work on gear quality and some other things, but at least give it a shot. So here we go. This first one's a doozy. We're going to skip over some of the names just to help get through this long essay. Hey, Smilegate, fun fact, long essayed um, dissertation skills, they're great, but nobody wants to read them. So you should just put TLDR, does this, does this, does this. I'm basically going to do that for you. So, when attacked, she attacked, she, when attacked, attacks all enemies before hatching two of her eggs. The queen will absorb some of the damage taken by the ads. When the, cast, when the caster's health is 50% or less from being attacked, grants an extra turn, activates Death Trap, hatching the other two adds. Those adds 
have a 30% chance to counterattack when the caster is attacked. Grants invincibility and immunity to allies except for the caster at the start of the battle. This skill summoning effects can only be activated once per battle. It's a lot. Basically, they're all immune. They're all invincible at the first. Then you're going to chisel away. Some of them are going to become damageable. You'll be chipping away on them. All while focusing on Queen. And eventually, as you go through the fight, the others will come up. They're going to be annoying. They're going to be spraying crap back at you. So you do want some sustain for this fight. We're going to give it a shot. Tamron should be able to do this. Lilius, if I didn't change her from Guild Wars today, she's probably on Adamant, maybe on Arius. I think she's on Arius. Uh, also, I think Arby might accidentally be on Daydream Joker, not Alexis Basket, what he has been through most of this raid. I was messing around with some stuff today on stream. So, we're going to jump into this in just a second and continue on. Now, here's the other stuff. Queen's Authority increases attack and defense for two turns at the start of the turn. Grants a stackable increased attack at the end of the turn. When the caster is inflicted with three or more debuffs after being attacked, grants an extra turn and dis dispels all buffs. So typically you don't want to bring somebody who can debuff a lot or she will trigger that. The only debuff we really have here, and the only debuff we have, is his silence. Or his, yeah. No, it's his um, decreased hit chance. The Queen's Terror decreases the target's attack. This will be annoying. Hit chance at speed as enemies' health decreases. At the start of the caster's turn, stuns targets with 30% less, 30 or less health for one turn. Thankfully, with Tamron, you shouldn't have this happen. You might get there with Arby, but he'll, you know, die. Rez can hear the approaching rune and never mattered anyway. Then her Hellish Cut attacks the enemy, increasing skill cooldowns by one turn. This will be a little annoying. Before dispelling all buffs. Also slightly annoying. When the enemy's health is 50% or less, activates an additional AoE attack. Also slightly annoying. And then Death Trap is right here. Attacks all enemies, inflicting stackable decreased speed and defense. Damage dealt increased proportional to the caster's lost health. The skill can only be used when the caster's health is 50% or less. So you don't have to worry about this skill for the first half of the fight. What we'll do is I'm going to chisel him down, chisel her down. We're going to get to right about here. We'll let you see it. And then we'll finish it off and go from there. There's no point in you watching through most of this fight. It should go fairly easy. As you can see, Arby's already done a decent chunk of damage. With where my gear quality is, none of these fights are even that big of a deal as you can see right there we changed over two of them hatched they lost their invincibility and now i can actually start killing them i don't think we have the damage here on vivian to kill these she does have portrait i would be actually quite curious so we are going to hang out just for a second because i want to see can vivian do this i don't know where she's it's been a minute since i actually paid attention to this fight now one uh aoe can't do it okay cool but yeah they're gonna chip away this is why I brought Vivian and Arby so that I have consistent AoE damage to chip the adds down if I need it. But we're actually, we might as well just hang out now. <laughs> we're about to hit 50% right now. Now we're below. So here you go. Here's our skill. We had immunity. No big deal. Played through. Now they're hatching. Now they're going to start counterattacking at a 30% chance. I'm not really worried about this with my gear quality, Arius and her. Vivian can actually pop some of these kids. Okay. Nice. Yeah, you see, here's the counterattack. At a 30% chance, more like 100. Yeah, Aureus, we're, we're not worried about any of this. There's the attack and the defense buff. But as you can see, we're ripping through this really easy with the quality of gear we have. This fight shouldn't be a lot difficult for you. I mean, I literally even shouldn't cut away. <laughs> I didn't expect it to be this quick. Some of them are take a few minutes to chisel down. And most of the time I'm AFK doing other stuff and I just come back and I see, "Oh, fight's complete." And I don't even I don't even realize how often it takes cuz I'll be surfing YouTube, working on video stuff, writing things up. So I don't really pay attention to a lot of the fights. Um, when we do it on stream, typically I'm more focused in on chat at that point. 
So we've got the one debuff up. It's not a big deal. We've already killed some ads. There we go. Can you hear the approaching ruin? And this is a uh, pretty much an easy done fight. Now we have 41 morale and we haven't even camped yet. There is a good chance we could go kill another one. Now, obviously to save morale, we are going to teleport back and I'm gonna take a stab at going towards the secretary. So I'm gonna take this long path and I'll see you down at the boss. All right, now we're down here at secretary and the good news is it's not a dissertation quite like Queen was. This is a lot easier of a fight. It sounds more complex on paper than it is. It's just a pretty easy fight to blast through. So final evolution grants the caster an att a stackable attack, defense, and speed. Increases every turn after hatching from the cocoon. This will be after 50%. Prepare for evolution. If the caster's health is 50% or less when attacked, attacks all enemies before transforming into a huge cocoon and summons two car Cararax chargers. Damage suffered in one attack does not exceed 50% of max health. You can't one-shot it. Mastery of Life grants the caster stackable increased attack and speed every time an Azimuthus Watcher hatches. So when one of those things hatches, he's going to speed up. Increases combat readiness of the caster when an Azimuthus Watcher is attacked. So you're basically combat pushing him when you kill the when you kill ads. It's not going to be that big of a deal. And then he spews rocks with a 50% chance to stun for one turn. Not that big of a deal. And then um, Incubate Egg summons up four Asmodeus Watchers. Existing ally monsters have skill cooldowns reduced by three turns before being granted an extra turn. None of this is anything you're going to have to worry about. He's going to go in. RB's going to do his thing. I'm going to just literally click it on auto and let it do its thing. You can see we're blasting through once again with ease. We're almost there, almost to 50% health. There you go. Here now comes prepare for evolution. Now, we start working this stuff down. This is very easy. We're literally nuking right through this. Now, we got Tamron going to push us past the mobs, which will allow us to probably kill it this this full skill rotation. Yeah, everybody gets blown by but Tamron. Perfect. If Vivian would have just attacked, this thing would have been dead. And then we could have he could have gone into his final four. There you go. Now he shall hatch from his cocoon. Now he's a pretty butterfly. Nope, he looks just as ugly as he did before. We can keep dreaming. As you can see, we one skill took over half of his almost half of his health. This fight shouldn't be too terrible. I would recommend trying to bring some AoE and just go at it. You shouldn't really struggle with any of these fights if you have gear quality. If you're struggling, it's a gear quality issue. Now, I do want to show you this is the path you take. And at this point, I don't have the stamina. It's negative 7 morale. We're going to teleport. We're negative 10. Even if I was to go down here to take this fight, it's not really worth uh, to go burn because I'll t I will go with by the time I get to this knuckle right here We're already you know getting into the 20s Because if I think there's a fight in here, so there's you're negative like 14 So yeah, you're in the mid negative 20s if you want and you feel like you've got the morale or maybe your morale is higher after this fight Sure go in and start working your way down But here's what you need to consider now even though it's gonna be a day for me. It's gonna be seconds for you um, we only got this one fight left and when you're done with this you're done for the week I'm gonna end up burning some stamina in here when it's all said and done at the end of the video just to get some extra coins probably come up and go up this knuckle right through here this branch just to gain some extra ancient coins along the way that's typically what I do but I will not enter it again on this reset so see you in a second and we're back any more time skips and this would probably be some sort of multiverse movie. All right, now, final fight here for us today is going to be the Jubilee Council. 
we're just gonna go ahead and auto path down here this isn't as bad as you think and I'll explain the mechanics once we get down to the boss see you guys in a second all right so we made it down to the bottom fight so here we go we're gonna jump in we're gonna turn it on off off auto <clears throat> and we'll start off the Juvelee Council so this fight is something you definitely want to bring AoE to, and I'll explain why in just a second. So we're going to cover the passives, the skills, and kind of go over the mechanic. So Black Death splits into three when the caster's health is 70 or less or 40 or less. So twice he's going to go into splitting into multiple packs. Not a big deal. Until the core monster is killed every time an enemy starts their turn, all the enemies will suffer... Uh, damage proportional to the max health and have one debuff dispelled <clears throat> when reappearing after splitting the caster appears with 70 or 40 percent health basically this is a this is just a uh, stage change right now it's in the actual monster then it's going to split into three um you'll need to kill the three or get lucky and pick one of them off and they'll go back now this one's interesting Inflict Curse, when the caster is debuffed after being attacked, grants two random buffs for two turns. After dispelling all debuffs, number of buffs granted increase proportional to the number of debuffs up to a maximum of three. Shouldn't really have to worry about this too terribly much, but just note, it is going to be random buffs, and these are the buffs that can apply. Attack, increased defense, increased speed, increased crit hit chance, increased evasion, continuous healing, and barrier. Plague, Poisoned enemies will poison after enemy for two turns hold on poisoned enemies why does that not read right poisoned enemies will poison another enemy oh i see what it's saying for two turns after the or at the beginning of the turn effect does not occur while the caster is split i see what it's trying to say so when it's split up it will not do this okay i got it and then its attack is spread disease attacks an enemy See, if you, I guess if you read it uh, right to left instead of left to right, this would have made more sense. After attacking a random enemy, poisoning for two turns before granting stackable increased attack and speed to the caster, activates the same attack again afterwards. And then this is its uh, group ambush where it splits off. Attacks all enemies, dispels all buffs, extending the duration of all debuffs for two turns. Damage dealt is proportional to the number of debuffs. Okay, so this is from over here. Honestly, it took me longer to read this than it is for you to kill it. So we're just going to jump in, go right into it. The phase changes aren't really going to be a big deal. Again, just try to bring AoE. Single targets are a little bit more annoying with this. With the way my team's built up, this, this fight shouldn't take... I probably have spent longer walking down here and explaining this than this fight's going to take overall. But for the sake of the video, just in case... Yeah, I'll, I'll hang out. I was going to say, I can cut it, um, but they're chunking it. I think that's kind of been the theme here is where I'm at now, gear quality. This is really not that big of a deal. Okay, so here's the... We're at 70%. They split. It's not a big deal. Now, Vivian is going to kind of put some work in here. We're getting pretty quick. Yeah, I mean, we're not worried about health. We're not worried about anything. There we go, it goes back. You can see we defeated one. The Hell Raid one's a little more interesting. It's definitely, you've gotta, you gotta play uh, Guess Who. One of them you have to kill. But that's another for another video. So as you can see, it finally procced. It put up a defense buff, which isn't that big of a deal. Just a little bit tankier. He's about to go in the split form again. Super easy. Honestly, I could probably Arky and kill those things, but I, I, in Vivian we trust, in Arby we trust. This is a easy fight. Um, I will show you guys the gear at the end, because um, I'm going to end up farming out the rest of uh, my morale here. Just for some extra coins once the fight's over with. And then I'll cut back, I'll show you my units, just so you can see what I was doing and why. The Ar There's only one fight where I had Arbiter Vildred on daydream joker in here and that was just accidental most of the time he's on his Alexa pass because i don't change for this i was farming asmanac is why and there you go normal raid is complete all five fights have been beaten so let's take a
quick look at the map so that you guys can see the paths. The way we fought it is we went west and we came up here. We defeated him. We spent the rest of our morale. We teleported back. We spent the rest of our morale and we went over here, defeated him. We probably died somewhere around here. And we did our free revive and came back and started the next fight. So you'll die somewhere between this, depending on your morale. You'll die somewhere probably in here. It's fine. The next trip, we come in and we killed the boss. Next trip, we came and worked our way up. Actually, I think we took the morale here because since it was such an easy fight. We worked our way up to the queen, fought the queen. This is the easiest, most efficient path. And then we came down from queen. We beat here. Actually, I think we did this all in one video. And then we came down here today and finished it off here, which is why you don't see the battle and the pathing tags is because these were done from a separate raid. But yeah, there's the map. It's super easy to get to. There's no need to be getting lost. What I'm going to end up doing is on this video, I'm going to teleport here. I will camp and then I'm going to go farm out probably this upper loop and then I'll end the video, come back. Well, I'm actually going to end it here. I'll come back and I'll show you my gear and we'll wrap up. Okay, so I finished up clearing out hell ra or normal raid. Uh, you can see that with all the exploring I did, we only explored 51%. That's fine. That's completely normal, completely expected. <clears throat> so there you go. If you followed along with me, congratulations, you've now beat Normal Raid. Now do this again every week. And you only need to take three fights. Remember, all you need is two bosses and queen. Two bosses and queen a week to get your Hell Raid key. As you can see, I've got six stored up now. We'll be covering Hell Raid in another series later on. It's on its way, but it's going to take me a bit just because I'm working on it. I got a lot going on. So, now I wanted to show you my units just so you can say, hey, why why were you doing it like that? Why was it so much easier? Well, what I'm going to do is to keep it easier for you, I'm going to bring up my... There we go. So, this is my stream layout, and this way my head isn't blocking stats, so you can check it out here. So the four units we used were Arbiter Vildred, no imprints, this is just him sitting as is. This is, his gear is currently as it stands. I'm trying to fix it, dial it in. I would like more attack, I'd like less speed, honestly, for where he's at. Um, but this is what it's working with. Um, obviously I changed back and forth between Daydream Joker and Alexis basket. I typically leave Alexis basket on as long as I'm not doing a long Azamanac farm. When I'm doing a long Azamanac farm, I do change it to Daydream Joker or when I'm not in where I'm not worried about um, guild, uh, guild Wars. When Guild Wars are up, I don't want to take this off just because I want this to stay on my defense. RB is on my defense and here he is. That's fine. Y'all can come snipe him. He's 255 speed. It's fine. Lilius is my next one. These are her stats. Um, I'd like to get her bulkier. I'm still working on refining her overall set before I commit, especially with the helm. I probably could go ahead and commit the helm. The chest I am working on. But overall stats, as you can see, I don't even have a plus 30 Arius shield yet. This is probably my... my after I finish Symbol of Unity, this is probably my, my next 30 is going to be this artifact. I'm going to... This is... She's a work in progress. I, I'm not 100% really... I'm not... I'm satisfied enough that I'm keeping her here for now. But this is not what I want my end game Lilius to look like. I would like to get a little bit more bulk overall. And I would like to potentially get a little more effect resist too. Because if I'm going to be using her in PvP, I would like to see maybe more or just maybe I can give up the effect resist for more HP maybe that'll make me happier I'd like to see around 25,000 HP and maybe like 1750 defense would be good so work in progress but I'm I'm, I'm, I'm happy with it again scuff Tamarin this literally is using garbage gear and somehow magically is keeping me alive in everything I do this is the most broken unit in the game I cannot stress this enough and then Last but not least, my lady, Vivian. Now, she changed a little bit since we started the video. I've modded in more crit chance. 
Uh, still working on more crit chance, but I'm going to make up the difference from her ring is where I'm going to get it from. This, If I can roll effectiveness and the HP roll into crit chance, I'm, I'm golden. I'm happy with it. I can eventually replace... Yeah, we can eventually replace this necklace when I beat this, which won't take much. It just is getting the right stats and getting it rolled properly. But if I can get um, a new ring on her, I can probably get her up in the 90s. And I'll be satisfied, honestly. I think I can do it. So there are my... And as you can see, I'm using Portrait of Savior. Not even max level. And that's literally my team. It works really well for me, where I'm at. Now, here's what my advice to you is. Obviously, you don't have these units, you don't have them built like this. It's going to take you some time to work through it. But think about it as the mechanics of what you need. You're going to want single target DPS. You're going to want AoE DPS. You're going to need a healer. You're going to need a tank. You're going to need to cleanse off some crap. So you got to think about the, the overall units and what you're taking in. Can you make anything work? Yes. Is it going to make your life more difficult? Probably. But... Look at what you have and work through it. If it's your first time through and you're going to try it with Wyvern Team, go for it. Just know that it's not going to work for everything perfectly, but it might get you through. It might be beatable. I can't say. I didn't start hell. I didn't start normal raid until I had most of these units. But if you're made it through progression, you haven't really leveled up too much, and you're wanting to try normal raid, and you've beat Nick Seed Five again. I can't stress this enough. If you've beat Nick Seed Five. You can start normal raid. If you haven't, go beat Nick Seed's, Nick Seed Sanctum five first, and then you can come back here. So that's gonna take care of the normal raid guide. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.